Mode set. Executing. What's up, gamers? Welcome back to Escape from Monkey Island. Alright, so, we just made it to Lucre Island. Mr. Cheese is gonna continue to work on the ship. And, uh, everyone's kinda off to their own vices. We've got work to do, so let's get to it. So, we need to go talk to our grandfather's lawyers. Or, Grandpa Marley's lawyers. Oh, law office. Here we go. Oop, turn. Lucre Island Port Authority. Uh... I, isn't that the... Yeah, that's the law office. Hang on, let me try to get back in there. Oh, no it's not. It's back this way. I'm sorry. Here's the law office. <clears throat> um, excuse me, is this... Come in. Come in. Come in. What can we do for you? I was told you guys could help me. Of course we can. What is it, wrongful dismemberment? Hit and run dinghy accident? Hurt your back while pillaging another ship? Uh, no. I need you to see if you can save my house from being destroyed. That doesn't sound very prestigious. Lucrative. Did I mention that my house is the governor's mansion on Melee Island? Governor's mansion, you say? Well, that changes things. Nice use of the TM. <laughs> but you can't be the governor. I'm here representing the Honorable Elaine Marley Threepwood, governor of the Tri-Island area. She's my wife. Oh, I get it. He's joking about the wife thing. And people think lawyers have no sense of humor. You know, it's illegal to make such wrongful and preposterous claims. Should we sue him? How much money do you think he has? I'm serious. We just got back from our honeymoon. Three glorious months on the high seas. And return to find the mansion under siege by a dastardly demolitionist. Is this alleged demolitionist wealthy? Hmm, yes, we could sue them. Put a lien on their catapult. File a writ of habeas money as... Wouldn't you rather go after the big bucks? If Elaine wins the election, she'll be a powerful person. And if the mansion is saved, she'll have someone to thank. And if that someone is you... We would be given a lot of money? Er... Uh. Not given. Think outside the juror's box, my esteemed colleagues. We could become the official lawyers for the Tri-Island area. Yes, the preferred legal team of the governor's office. What do you need from us, young fellow? Mm, I don't know. You handled Grandpa Marley's estate, right? Right. 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 Did he have a plan for such a crisis? Nope. 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 <laughs> but we'll get right on it. Right. Right. Okay, I'll wait. Actually, this may take a while. Legal issues can be quite complicated. And take a lot of research. Isn't there something else you could do for a while? See the island. Take in the sight. Um, I guess so. Oh, hey. You might as well take this. What is it? It's a letter from Grandpa Marley. It was supposed to be delivered after his granddaughter got married. This will save us the trip. Now be gone. We have work to do. Okay, well, <clears throat> that takes care of that. Let's go somewhere a little more quiet. Forget case law, we'll make it up. Okay, so, the lawyers are on the case. It's gonna take a while, though. Let's take a look at this letter from Grandpa Marley. Hmm, let's see what it says. <clears throat> My dearest Elaine. If you are reading this, then you are married, and I am dead. Now that you've finally settled down with a fearless pirate husband, it's time for you to claim the final pieces of your family's heritage. At the Lucre Island Municipal Bank, you'll find a safe deposit chest under my name. Among other things, the chest contains the deed to the Marley Mansion. Never lose sight of this deed. Furthermore, the chest also contains my wedding gifts to you. I'm sorry that I was unable to deliver them in person, but I go to my grave confident that you've chosen a man I would be proud to call grandson. Lastly, and most importantly, the chest contains the keys to the most terrifying secret in the Caribbean. A secret ten times as terrifying as Big Whoop? The secret of the ultimate insult. Yipes! If the unholy power of the ultimate insult ever found its way into the wrong hands, there's no telling what sorts of hexbawn mischief could be unleashed upon our fun-loving pirate citizens. Guard these secrets with your life, and know that no matter where you are, your grandfather is watching over you. With all my love, Horatio Tokamata Marley. How sweet. Uh, P.S. If your deadbeat parents come around looking for a handout, tell them to take a long walk off a short gangplank. <laughs> Ominous. All right, so, uh, 
we need to go check out the bank then, because a oh, safe deposit box in Grandpa Marley's name had the te had the deed to the mansion, uh, wedding gifts, and uh, secret of the ultimate insults. So let's check the bank here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And just why not, young lady? Bank policy, sir. I can't convert these traveler's checks because we've never heard of, uh, what's his name? Australia. But you've honored them countless times before. We've had a bad run of counterfeit money come through here lately, so we've had to tighten our policy. And if you ask me, these don't look real. <laughs> Besides the funny name, there's a picture of a strange animal on here that has another one popping out of its belly. That's a kangaroo, you ignorant pirate trollop. <laughs> See? There you go. Kangaroos. Another funny name. Funny to say, too. Kangaroo. <laughs> kangaroo. <laughs> oh, strength. I've got business to attend to, but I'll come back, and when I do, I want these honored. Have a nice day, Mr. Mandrill. You should switch to decaf. Kanga. Ugh. Row. All right, well, that happened. Kanga. Hi there. Welcome to the second bank of lucre. I'm Brittany. How may I help you? Uh, hi, Brittany. What happened to the first bank? What happened to the first bank of lucre? Nothing. It was our public relations department's idea. They felt that being called the first bank didn't project an image of experience. I don't think that's how it works. All right, well, anyway, I'd like to make a withdrawal. I need to make a withdrawal. Do you have an account here? No. Then what else can I do for you? I'm sorry, did I say withdrawal? I meant to say I need to retrieve items from a safe deposit box. I'd like box. to retrieve some items from my safe deposit box. Fine, sir. And whose name is it under? Marley, H.T. Marley. Here's a letter that might help. I see. This is for Governor Marley. Do you have power of attorney to act on her behalf? I'm her dashing husband. <laughs> Not good enough. Oh, well, there is this. Oh my, <laughs> that will be fine, sir. Just a moment, Mr. Quidworth. There's a gentleman here to use the vault. Everything seems to be in order, Mr. Marley. That's Mr. Threefoot. As you wish, sir. If you'll just follow me into the vault, we can open up your grandfather-in-law's safe deposit chest. Mm. Ah. Well, here it is, sir. The safe deposit chest of H.T. Marley, just as he left it over 20 years ago. Wow, what an amazing collection of junk. Why would Grandpa Marley store garbage like this in a bank? That Governor Marley was an eccentric old salt, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, we were all crushed when he disappeared off the face of the earth like he did. Anyway, well, I've got some loans to turn down. You just let me know when you're done here, and I'll come running. Gee, thanks. Well, I guess I better start looking for that deed to the Governor's Mansion so I can get home to Elaine. Let's see now. Hot water Mr. bottle. Freeport. Monkey pacifier, uh, Jimmy Hoffa, uh, do-it-yourself tattoo kit, Robert bloody Jeffrey stiletto Jeffrey knife, Jeffrey bottomless Jeffrey mug. Well, you really should have called me first. We have rules about leaving the vault unattended. Gee, I'm sorry. I'll go back. And I'll see if I can scrounge up a rock. Wax lip. Wax lips. Ah, there it is. Stick him up. Jakes? Who are you supposed to be? Isn't it obvious? I've got a brush three foot. No, you're not. Well, what makes you say that? Well, for one thing, Guybrush is much better looking than you are. <laughs> and for another, the real Guybrush doesn't smell like anchovy halitosis. Ooh. All right, mate. Bucko. That's enough of that. Buck away from the Barney heirlooms and be quick about it. Now, Mr. Threepwood, take a good long look at the last place you'll ever see. <laughs> I knew that deregulated banking would lead to this. Well, that is unfortunate. Okay, so a bandit with no nose came in, impersonating Guybrush, and now we're kind of stuck in the vault, and we need to get out. Oh, looks like there's a bunch of old things left in here we could probably use. Let's take this old sword. And let's take... Whoops. This medium sea sponge. I'll never give up! Hmm. And 
this sea sponge. The safe deposit box is still open here. Let's take a look in, in here. There seems to be something inside. It's a music box. Oh, let's pick that up. Hey, there's a bottle of fine grog behind this music box. Ooh, fine grog. Okay. <clears throat> and... I want all of it! And don't forget the loot behind the counter! Hey. Ooh, this thing reeks. Hmm. Guess the uh, bandit dropped it. Okay, well... Now to see if we can get out of here. If I could open it, I wouldn't be trapped in here. That you wouldn't, Guybrush. Nobody leaves until I get all the loot and safe passage out of here. Hmm. Let's see if we can use this on the hinges. I want all of it. And don't forget the loot behind the counter. Everybody I broke free. the hinge off, but I broke the sword, robbery. too. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, well, that made a crack in the door. Let's see if we can use that. The sword seems to be widening the crack a bit. Ooh. Okay. Oh, With the sword jammed the in there, the gap is Just larger. Give me everything else. Let's throw this sea sponge in there. And this other one. <clears throat> okay, and let's see if we can throw a little bit of that grog on there. That can't that stuff can't be good anymore. I think I'm getting close. The door looks ready to pop. Hmm. I think we're missing something. There's only one criminal ah. more nefarious than me, and that's Pinto's feet. Okay, use the sea sponge with the crack. Okay, and now let's use the scrog again. Top of the world, ball! So long, suckers, and remember. You've just been robbed by Guybrush Threepwood! <laughs> hey! Where'd he go? Hey, what's all the commotion? Get, Get him! Ah! You're under arrest, Mr. Threepwood. Right. Down to the jailhouse with you. Ah, oh, boy. All right, you. Didn't your mum ever explain that bank robbery isn't nice? It wasn't me, it was the No-Nose Bandit! Right. No-Nose Bandit. Or perhaps it was the guy we caught red-handed. You! Although we haven't found the loot yet. You'll find it with the real robber. So let me go and get cracking. Detective work isn't my job. If you want to clear your name, you've got a few things to do. Okay, what? I need the perpetrator, I need proof he was at the scene of the crime, and I need proof that he committed the crime. You know, it'd be a lot easier if I could just bribe you. I'll ignore that, Threepwood. Around here, we do things by the book. Now, since this is your first offense, You'll be placed under house arrest. I get to go back to the mansion and play with Timmy? No. You are confined to Luca Island. You are not permitted to leave until and unless you are cleared of the crime of bank robbery. To make sure you don't leave, you are required to wear the voodoo anklet of extreme discomfort. I was wondering about that. It's rather uncomfortable. Can you loosen it? Well, that wouldn't be the point then, would it? It gets a lot more uncomfortable if you try to leave the island. <sighs> At least I'm not in jail. <clears throat> All right, I guess we're definitely not trying to leave the island then. Let's uh, look around here. Chicken grease, that might come in handy. Eh, Otis is back here. What are you doing back here, Otis? Otis, what are you doing here? I'm a victim of society. That's what you said four games ago. Let me guess, you were framed, right? How did you know? Eh, just a hunch. Some old guy with a weird accent accused me of stealing flowers from his front yard. When are you due to be released? He'll be released just about the same time you prove your... <coughs> innocence. Hey, just because my captain is a notorious bank robber, there's no reason to take it out on me. Otis! Jay? You're not helping. What is it with you and flowers? It's a plot, I tell you! People are to make me seem less fearsome and piratey by accusing me of being the kind of pirate who likes to pick flowers. If it's any comfort, Otis, I never found you all that fearsome to begin with. Ah, uh, go pick a pack of posies. Okay, yeah. I'm feeling an incredible feeling of deja vu. Would it help if I gave you a breath mint? Wait, it's past. <laughs> Okay. Well, nice callbacks to Monkey Island 1. Let's go. See you later, Otis. You're gonna get me out of here, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that, Otis. Alright, so, we are now confined to Lucre Island. We've been totally framed, and we've got some work to do to clear our innocence. So... 
let's see if we can start by learning a bit more about the perpetrator. So, the pirate, or the bandit that came by didn't have a nose. So, wonder if he was a regular at the Palace of Prostheses. Uh, before we go in there, though, there's a manhole here. Let's use this on the manhole. Oh, crud. I dropped the sword into the sewers. Oh, well. Now it's a broken and very stinky sword. Well, guess we're not using that. Uh, let's pick up the manhole cover. <clears throat> and take a quick look at it. Uh, wow. What a very oops. deep, dark hole. Not, not to that. mention smelly. Phew. On second thought, I don't think I want to go down there for any reason. There's something scratched into the bottom of this. It says Cindy loves Fred, but scratched out right next to that, it says Larry loves Cindy. What All a right. Weird place to profess your love for someone. Cindy, Fred, and Larry. Interesting. Okay. Let's go into the Palace of Prostheses. Um, let's see. Hello, sir. Welcome to the Palace of Prostheses, home of the no detection, no infection, no rejection, 30 day guarantee. <laughs> you smell new. Who are you? Guybrush Threepwood. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. Well, you don't smell so mighty to me. What? In fact, you smell kind of flowery. What? Heck, I can smell your lilacs and lilies aftershave even through my stuffy nose. Wow, you're good. Well, I'm Dave. Around here, they call me Dead Eye Dave. I'm the Tri Island area's foremost expert in anatomical approximation. Uh, okay. Um. Clearly, you're blind. Uh, I'm looking for a thief. I'm looking for a no nosed pirate thief. Well, we certainly get a lot of those around here. Thieves? N no, no nosed pirates. Really? Oh, my, yes. You'd be amazed how often pirates lose their honkers. Does this pirate thief of yours have a name? Not that I know of. Oh, that's too bad. Of course, even if I knew the pirate's name, it probably wouldn't matter. Without Pongo, I wouldn't be able to retrieve your pirate's file. Hmm. Well. See you later. That makes one of us. We've got a hint here. He's got a, uh, an extraordinarily strong sense of smell. Let's see if we can hand him this, because this is apparently a strong scent. Hey, does the smell in this hanky remind you of anything or anybody? Oh, no. Let me see. <laughs> no, I don't really smell much of anything in it. What do you mean? I thought blind people's... Hey, 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 hey. Visually challenged. Sorry. I thought visually challenged people's other senses become enhanced to offset the lack of vision. I mean, I have a fully functioning set of eyes, and even I can smell the foul odor coming off this hanky. Well, that only applies when my nose is clear. I've kind of got a little bit of a cold and stuffed nose, so I can't smell much right now. If you really need to make use of my amazing odor divining abilities, you're going to have to find a way to give me an amplified version of this smell. Like how? Just follow your nose. You don't say. Okay, well... It smells somewhat like hickory smoked fish. It smells sort of like flowers growing in a cesspool. Huh. It smells a little like fish snot. It smells a tiny bit like a corpse floating in a bog. It smells okay. kind of like a lumberjack wiped his armpits with it. Okay, so that gave us some ideas. It has the faintest whiff of something nice, though. Really? It smells somewhat like hickory smoked fish. Okay, so... Fish, a bog, a flower. Getting a couple of ideas here, so we're gonna have to combine a scent here. Let's, let's leave. What else do I have in here? Nothing? Okay. Let's go back this way. Yeah, let's take a look over here. Pile of spritzers. It's a pile of empty perfume spritzer bottles. Empty. One of those can come in handy. Let's pick up one of those. I'll just take one. Okay.
What's the... Hey, stop that. <clears throat> Welcome to Sense and Sensibilities, where subtle fragrances from exotic lands transport you to worlds of romance and delight. My name is Hugo, and I am a licensed aromatherapist. Can Hugo interest you in one of our fine perfumes, colognies, or aftershaves? Uh, let's see. You wouldn't, have seen a no pirate, you wouldn't happen would you? to have seen a no-nosed pirate run by here with a sack of loot, would you? No, but Hugo did see you run by here with a sack of loot. When I ran by here with a sack of loot, which way was I going? Towards the deepest forests of Lucar Island. Thanks. Huh, okay, so apparently the bandit went through the forests. What's that ungodly stench you've been exposing to unsuspecting passers-by? That's our featured fragrance, Eau de la Chuck. Who'd want to smell like La Chuck? Oh, it's very popular among tourists wanting to capture that authentic swashbuckling mystique. But La Chuck smelled like a rotting corpse. We prefer to refer to it as earthy. Hmm. Don't say. Oh, de la Chuck's really that popular? Oh, yes, sir. In the last few hours, Hugo's gone through dozens of sample bottles. Hmm. See you later. Thank you for your patronage. Please come again. Sample bottle, you say? Perhaps I'll just take this then. Okay. Let's be off. All right, so, more work to do. Whoop, I don't want to go in there. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, oh. The game crashed. Why did that happen? Oh, man. I'm going to have to... <clears throat> All right, you might just want to come back later. Okay, welcome back, guys. Sorry about that. So, I uh, had to... I had to get back to where I was. Uh, so, we just left the Palace of Prostheses. Okay, so we've got work to do. So, let's see. So, we know a couple of things that this... Um, that the, the, the no-nose pirate or no-nose bandit smells like. So let's go see if we can find a couple of things and whip up our own little concoction here. He said he smells something like a lumberjack and something. I can't remember. So let's go to the house of sticks here. Freddy, where's my new walking stick? It's right over here, Mr. Mandrill. A brand new cane, hand-carved to the exact specifications of your previous stick. It better be, or I'll buy up your putrid little shop and replace it with something useful, like a public urinal. I uh, take it that you'll be putting this on your tab, Mr. Mandrill? What do you think? You know, if I weren't a peaceable sort, I'd whack that gentleman over the head with one of my sticks. I wouldn't stop whacking until his brains leaked out all over my rustic, hand-polished hardwood floor. <laughs> yep. But you're a peaceable sort, right? Yep. Hmm, okay, well, when he picked up his stick, it looks like it left some wood shavings. Those could come in handy. Let's grab those. <clears throat> okay, let's leave. And... Let's see, where else can we go on this island? Whoop. Well, yeah, let's go this way. This appears to be Ozzy Mandrill's house. I don't think we're gonna go in yet, but look, there's a little flower here. Let's pick this flower. Okay. Whoop, shoot. And there's a marsh over here? All right, ah. Bog water. Okay, so let's see if I can use this empty spritzer. That's the cologne. I want to use this one. With... not the raft, but with the puddle. 
I've always wanted swamp scented perfume. Okay. Missing a few things. Let's grab this wood sh whoop. Hang on. I did that wrong. Use wood shavings with a spritzer. There. That should make the concoction smell interesting. Okay, and let's use this flower with that spritzer too. There. That should make my concoction smell better. Okay, missing just one more thing. Let's leave, head back to town. Uh, <clears throat> I was gonna say, where are you, Guybrush? All right, here we go. All right, let's go into the bait shop. Phew, it smells like dead fish in here. Nine kinds of dead fish, huh? Okay, looks like we got free bait right here. Let's have at some of it. What is going on here? Wee, look at the cute little termite circus. It's just like a flea circus, but with termites. Termite circus, you say? Those little guys might come in here. That was handy. exciting. All right. Well, we'll come back to that. So, let's take this fish. Put it in here. Nothing like the smell of rotting bait to woo the ladies. Okay, so we've got a perfume. Let's see if Dead Eye Dave recognizes this scent. Back to the Palace of Prostheses. Take this, and we'll use it with Dead Eye Dave. Whew! That's an all too familiar smell. I guess I can't complain though, since Yeti and Jungle Drums is my best customer. Yeti and Jungle Drums. The man regularly buys prosthetic noses from me. Really? He's my, uh, really good friend. Yeah. I lost track of him and, uh, missed him so much that I made a little odor potion to remind me of him. Okay, too much information. I have a strict rule of don't ask, don't smell. Well, anyways, if you know where I can find my uh, friend, that'd be very helpful. Oh, yeah, sure. He lives out past the Mists of Time Marsh. You can't get through there, though, without the directions he gave me. And it's filed away someplace in my Philomatic system. Well, let's go get that file. I can't. Pongo, my filing monkey, ran away a while back. He was the only one who knew how to run the Philomatic. As a result, I have no idea how to retrieve the map. But if you can figure it out, feel free. The controls are right here. Hmm. Yeti and jungle drums, huh? All right, let's twiddle with the controls here. So last I remember, this is a five... Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so these all... There's no way he has, like a hundred different there's like a ton of combinations but he, he's got you know i don't know what i'm trying to say anyway this is supposed to be a code for um <clears throat> the only clue i have to go on is the name so why why for yeti so that would be the whoops that would be the banana since that's everything from u to y i think and so n is kind of in the middle I think that's a pumpkin and jungle drums. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. That might be it right there. Let's see. It's some sort of document. The name on it says, Zixophilia J. Hangtime. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. Okay, so not quite. Almost got it. Let's see if I spin this one dial a little more. <clears throat> the name on it says, Victor L. Mo. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. Okay, I think I'm one more dial off. So that sounds like the right dial, but this one sounds wrong. Let's try that. 
<laughs> there we go. There are directions to Peg Nose Pete's house. Weird. Looks more like a train schedule to me. All right, Peg Nose Pete. So we've got Yeti and Jungle Drums. Okay, so. His directions look kind of like a train schedule, and that's because the mists of time are as they sound. You'll go through time. So we're kind of going to need something to ma to navigate through the time of that marsh. Okay, we've got his directions. Again, that termite circus might come in a little handy later, so let's see if I can... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> He's going to hear if I pick something up because his other senses are compensating for a lack of sight. So let's use this music box with Dead Eye Dave. Do you mind if I turn this on? I said, do you mind if I turn this on? Hmm. Guess not. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's hurry. And look at the basket. It's a basket of finely crafted prosthetic limbs. And we'll pick up the prosthetic It's a wooden hand. hand. Did I hear something? Nope. Just the haunting melodies of my music box. <laughs> okay. Well, let's uh, go grab our music box. Okay, and out we go. All right, <clears throat> so we've got a name, we've got a map, we've got a hand. Um, let's see. Du -du 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 -du. What else do we have to do? <clears throat> um, well, let's go see if we can get anything out of... Uh, oh, you know what? Before I do that... I need to go back to the to the house of sticks. Or no, no, I need to. No, I'm wrong. I don't. Let's go to uh, his house, to Ozzy's house. If you're not careful, that'll happen. Enter the creepy mansion. Hi. Who are you? And what are you doing in my house? Uh. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. A pirate. I hate pirates. My name is Ozzy. Ozzy Mandrill. That name sounds familiar. Uh, let's see. Heavy metal performer. Um, master of the pan flute. Weren't you supposed to bring balance to the force? Weren't you the one who was supposed to bring balance to the force? Don't play the gink with me, Threepwood. Who's playing? Well then, allow me to illuminate the dingy corners of your mind. Ozzy Mandrill is a businessman, a capitalist, a real estate developer. I'm also the future king of the Caribbean. <laughs> hey, you're the guy who's trying to buy out the scum bar. The scum bar? That's just the tip of the aardvark. I'm gonna buy the whole Caribbean. Oh, Ozzy, it's people like you that give capitalists a bad name. Um, <clears throat> why are you buying, why are all you buying up all the land in the Caribbean? Because I'm a man with a vision. You too? What are yours like? I see a Caribbean freed from the chaotic plundering of grog-swilling pirates. A Caribbean made safe for the orderly consumerism of family-oriented themed restaurants and resorts. A Caribbean scrub clean of filth. A Caribbean you'd be proud to take home to your mother. Gee, mine are mostly about ice cream. Okay. And how do all my pirate friends fit into your capitalist utopia? Ah, oh, they'll be retrained. Retrained? Yes, the service-based economies of tomorrow's Caribbean will need legions of waiters, janitors, maids, and dishwashers. <laughs> uh-huh. <clears throat> what about pirates who don't want to be waiters, janitors, and dishwashers? What makes you think they'll have a choice? <laughs> okay. And how do the dozens of pirate support <laughs> industries fit into your scheme? They'll be torn down, of course. No more will these islands be cursed with a blight of run-down watering holes, murky voodoo shops, and disease-ridden houses of ill repute. Instead, our streets will be decorated with classy art houses, whimsical theme restaurants, and upscale knick-knack shops. So basically what I'm getting around this is that this wouldn't be so bad if he didn't want to end pirates at the same time. But what about the children? What about them? I don't know. Just thought I'd ask. <laughs> okay. I'm tired of discussing your warped dreams. 
and I'm tired of discussing them. Uh, what's your beef with pirates? What's your beef with pirates? Well, for one thing, pirate smell. The only thing that smells worse than a pirate is two pirates. It's enough to make a man park a tiger on the rug. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, um, so the dead animals. What's with all the dead animals? I like having them around. They remind me of where I came from. Burbank? Australia, you ninny. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, I'll be seeing you later. Not too soon, I hope. You know what? I don't like you, and because I don't like you, I'm gonna take this alone, and I'm gonna spray it all over your platypus. What are you doing? And what is that horrid smell? You've befouled my platypus. Ah, oh, crikey, look what you made me do. Now I need to order a new cane. Yep, have fun with that, you. I thought he'd never leave. Yeah, well, there's nothing I can really do in here, so time for us to leave. Still here, are ya? Nah, just leaving. Okay. So let's go back to town, <clears throat> put that away, and we'll go back to the House of Sticks. Actually, no, before I go back to the House of Sticks, I need to... Well, there's a couple things I need to do. Well, that can actually wait now that I think about it. So let's, um, <clears throat> let's go down this way. Uh, hello? Where's the path? Oh, there we go. Ah, these gentlemen have a clock. Hello, people. Oh, um. Um. Yes. Can I play next? Sure, if you don't mind waiting a few hours. Oh, why so long? I'll tell you why. Because Larvot, the pirate here, can't concentrate on the game for more than two minutes at a time. Can I help it if I have a wide variety of interests that cause my mind to wander? Yes, a wide variety of culinary interests, you mean. Well, I never. You never move, you mean? Hmm. Sounds like this gentleman's having a hard time making a move. Let's help him. Oh my gosh, someone set the food court on fire. Where? Haha! <laughs> nice move, Brainiac. That doesn't count. You know the rules. You let go of a piece. It's a move! But, but, but... Rules are rules, Tabo. Fine. Hmm... Interesting. Now you, sir? Um... Yes? So, who's so winning? So, who's winning? Uh, it's difficult to say. I've been chipping away at Mr. Santiago's material via a subtle Yeltsin stagger step attack. But it looks as though he's undermining my efforts via a modified Khrushchev burial defense. Ah, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> um, see if we can distract him. Gotta wait for him to pick up a piece. Look, up in the sky! Hmm. Good gravy. Is that a dagger I see before me? Hmm. Hmm. Shh, don't move. The rapture is going on right behind you. The rapture. Hmm. All right, so he's not very easily distracted. I'll let you get back to your game. Hmm. Let's see if he knows why. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, your friend seems awfully focused. Your friend seems awfully focused on the game. Notice that, did you? Senor Castaneda is exceptionally well disciplined. Once he sets his mind to a task, it's nearly impossible to shift his attention. Except... Yes? Well, he does carry something of a torch for Brittany, the bank teller. Interesting. Brittany, you say? I'll let you get back to your game. Thank you. Well, then. Hey! Yes? <laughs> hmm. Gotta wait. Brittany, look out! <gasps> Brittany, where? <laughs> Ooh, good move. Don't tell me you're gonna count that! You bet your bonny butt I am! You unbelievable jerk! 
Who was it told me that rules are rules, Tabo? Fine. You wanna see a move? Here's a move! You call that a move? This is a move! You can't do that! Oh yeah? Who's gonna stop me? Sweat Factory! I think we started a fight. Weasel Warrior! Well, they're probably not gonna notice if I do this. Full step stand in! Uh, let's just go now. <laughs> Fringe candidate! <laughs> All right, that happened. Oh, hey, Carla, hey, Carla what, are you doing what do here? you want? Where's Otis? He's on shore leave. Oh, okay. Why aren't you on shore leave? Why aren't you on shore leave? Someone has to stay and guard the ship while the big cheese repairs all the damage you inflicted on it. Since you're stuck here, would you like me to get you something from town? Like what? I don't know. You want a handcrafted walking stick? There's a shop that makes them. Walking sticks are for insecure wimps who can't keep their balance. I own five. Okay, fine. Hmm, maybe I should do some more window shopping first. Whatever. Have you seen a no-nosed pirate run by here? I thought you were looking for your wife's lawyers. Yes, but now I'm looking for a pirate with no nose. This is how it starts, isn't it? What are you talking about? First, it'll be something quirky and fun like a no-nose pirate. Then maybe an innocent little voodoo spell used to, oh, I don't know, ward off vampire bats or something. And before you know it, the Chuck will show up with his legions of undead goons and pow, we'll all be stuck on Monkey Island again. <sighs> I should have listened to Otis. So, what you're saying is that you haven't seen a no-nosed pirate? No. Hmm, okay. Carry on, Carla. Do I really have a choice? <laughs> okay, let's leave her alone. Go back up to the bait shop here. Hmm, just a duck here, huh? It's a rather unspectacular duck. An unspectacular duck, you say? <laughs> that we can pick up, okay. We can keep using him too and making him quack. Ma, Moo? What kind of weird duck are you? <laughs> I always love that joke. <laughs> Alright, put that guy away. Yes, we just shoved a duck in our pants. Okay, so. You're back, eh? Can't resist the smell of fresh bait, huh? If that's fresh, I don't want to know what old bait smells like. Yeah, that's not it, trust me. Okay, so let's use this wooden hand while he's not looking with the termite mm, circus. This requires stealth. Come and get it, boys. Ah, look at those little buggers go. They must be real hungry for the taste of redwood. All right. So we've taken his termites. While we're in town, let's go see if we can play a little prank on Ozymandrill, just because he's a jerk. Into the house of sticks. Okay, hey, here's uh, Ozzy's new cane. Let's use that with his cane here. Those little buggers sure know high quality wood when they see it. Pretty, my new cane, I better be ready. Oh, it sure is, Mr. Mandrel. It's right uh, over on that bench there. Creep wood? Thinking of buying a walking stick of your own, are you? Oh, it might make you look more distinguished. <laughs> Quite like a monkey in a hat. <laughs> yeah, those are funny. Put it on my bill, Freddy, and don't even think about overcharging me, or I'll own ya. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure, Mr. Mandrill. Hmm. He's leaving a trail of dust everywhere now. How quaint. That might come in handy. Okay. Let's head out to the Mist of Time. Okay, so let's use this raft here. Actually, I'm gonna take a quick picture of this map here. So let me grab my phone and look at the directions. There are directions to Pegno's Pete's house. Weird. Looks more like a train schedule to me. All right, let me take a quick picture of this so I don't have to keep pulling it out all the time. Okay, <clears throat> so. 
let's put this away and take out our clock. And we will use it. Whoop. We will use it with the raft. Okay, now we know what time it is. So let's use the raft. Okay, first of all, time is currently 2.50. So at 2.50, we need to travel north. Okay, it is now, let's see, 1.25, and we need to move east at 2.10. Oh, no, I'm sorry. At 2.05, we need to go north. Hey, Guybrush, I need your help. Oh. Here, take this. Let's see if I remember all these. Okay. Uh, who are, who are you? you? I'm you in the future. I need you to open the gate for me. Oh, you'll need this, too. Hey, great, a gun. Watch out, peg nose. And this. Um, great, a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. Um, open, whoops, oopsie. No, 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 open gate. It's locked. <sighs> with the key, genius. No way, that's probably peg nose Pete disguised as me again. Fine, let's talk to him some more. If you're really me, then what number am I thinking of right now? 28 and a half. Creepy. That is the number I'm thinking of. I guess you really are me. I'd better not. I think all this talking to myself is wreaking havoc with the space-time continuum. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's open the gate then. Yeah, that was worth it. Thanks, Guybrush. You're the greatest. Oh, I've got one more thing for you. Rope. Ooh, a rope. That'll be useful. Okay, now that that's over, the time is currently 12.30, and at 12.30 we need to go east, which is this way. Oop. Which is this way. Come on, now. This way. Okay, at 2 o'clock. Uh-oh. Oh, nope, there we go. 2 o'clock, I go south. Now it is 12.05, we need to go west, we go down this way a little bit, and then turn this way. All hey right. Guybrush, I need your help. Here we go again. Okay, I need to give him the key. Here, take this. Who are you? I'm you in the future. I need you to open the gate. I'm you in the future. I need you to open the gate for me. Uh, now I need to give him the, uh, the gun. Oh, you'll need this too. Hey, 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 great, a gun. Watch out, peg nose. I also need to give him the chicken with a pulley. And this. Um... Great, a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. If you're really me, then what number am I thinking of right now? 28 and a half. 28 and a half. Creepy. That is the number I'm thinking of. I guess you really are me. Thanks, Guybrush. You're the greatest. And now I need to give him the rope. Oh, I've got one more thing for you. There you go. Ooh, a rope. That'll be useful. So if I get any of that wrong, that'll rip a hole in space-time and send me all the way back to the beginning. 
So I need to do that exactly as it played out the first time. Okay. The time is now. Uh, 3.50. So... On 3.50, I need to go east. And here's the house. I can hear some people talking inside. If I move closer to the window, maybe I'll be able to make out what they're saying. Like I said, I got the job done. Now where's my money? Hmm, this should be good. Yeah, all in due time, my dear Mr. Pignose. Hey, that voice sounds familiar. We've only completed part of the plan. You've done an admirable job in getting Guybrush out of the way, as well as reappropriating the Marley family heirlooms. I trust you put them somewhere safe for the time being. Of course I have. I'm no idiot. That junk you're so interested in is safe and sound in my impenetrable cave. That junk, as you call it, may very well be the key to ridding these islands of pirates once and for all. Uh, uh, no offence, of course. Right. So about my fee? Later, my good man. In the meantime, the heirlooms are our little secret. Keep them hidden, and not a word to anyone. We'd hate to have my plan spoiled by an indiscretion. All right, Mr. Bagrill, we'll do it your way. But if you don't pay me soon, I'll cut your gizzard out. There's no need to be such a ruffian. You'll get what's coming to you. I'd better. I'm off to tend to my affairs. Now that we're in possession of the Marley heirlooms, I must begin determining how they relate to the ultimate insult. So, Ozzy and Pegnose are working together. After I deal with Pegnose here, I'll have to pay Mr. Mandrill a little visit. Okay, number of stuff to unpack there. So, Pegnose, Pete, and Ozzy Mandrill are working together. They've reappropriated the Marley heirlooms, which belong to us, but apparently are the key to unlocking the ultimate insult. We're going to have to figure that out. Um, now that we're here, though, let's play around a little bit here. Mar <laughs> Moo, what kind of weird duck are you? No, ah. no, oh, go away, you stupid duck! Hmm, looks like Pegnose is afraid of ducks. That might have something to do with why he lost his nose. Let's have a little fun with him. Whoops. Uh, with the welcome mat. Okay, let's take our duck out again. You stupid duck! He really hates ducks. Okay, let's do this then. I don't think so. You're going to jail, bucko. Well, Inspector, here's your real criminal. What's this? That looks like Peg Nose Beat. Let me out of here! It is. He's the one who framed me for the bank robbery. I'd like this anklet removed now. You got nothing on me. I overheard you and Ozzy talking about how he hired you to rob the bank and frame me. Ha! That won't hold up his evidence. He's right. Do you have proof he did it? Well, not exactly. Then I will not be administering justice in this case. But you can't just let him go. Oh, Pete's not going anywhere. He's wanted for plenty of other crimes. Come back when you think you can prove what you claim. <sighs> All right. Well, that's part of it. We've got, uh, the inspector said he did need three things. He needed a criminal, he needed proof he was at the scene, and we need the stolen loot. All right, I say that's a great place to stop for now, so let's save our game. Okay, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Make sure you check out the rest of the videos on the GSL YouTube channel. Check out officialytr.com slash forums for more fun and myself at twitch.tv slash chaos control channel. Streaming whenever I can. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.